Italian astronomer Galileo Galilei would take the theories of Copernicus and Kepler that the Sun was at the center of the solar system and prove them right beyond any shadow of a doubt. He did this with a new technology that would change the course of history. The telescope, in some sense, is the most blasphemous, the most seditious, the most revolutionary, and the most splendorous instrument of science. All of science received the greatest of gifts in this tool that brought distant objects close. Once the idea got out that you could take two lenses, line them up in such a way, put them in a tube, and make a spyglass out of it, that would spread like wildfire around the world, as it did. And so the issue now is not who's got the telescope, but you now know what to do with it. Are you looking in people's windows, or are you looking up and out into the universe? Galileo improved on the design in 1609 by grinding his own lenses and creating one that could magnify an unprecedented 30 times. And with that telescope, for some reason, he decided to look at the sky as opposed to the incoming ships to the Republic of Venice. And what he saw completely changed the scope of astronomy. Galileo was treated to the clearest, most detailed view of the heavens any person had ever known. Through his telescope, Galileo saw thousands more stars. A moon pocked with craters, satellites circling Jupiter, Saturn with giant ears. Greatest of all, Galileo plainly saw that Venus went through phases like our moon. Clear evidence that Venus orbits the Sun. Proof of a Sun-centered solar system. It showed for the first time that Copernicus was really right. The Earth wasn't the center of the solar system, the Sun was. So Galileo with his telescope pushed the Earth away from the center of the universe and said we're not the center of everything. We're one planet among others and there could be a much larger universe than we know. What Copernicus had assumed for aesthetic reasons, what Kepler deduced through measurements and mathematics, Galileo proved. Galileo saw. Galileo revealed. The ancients had seen everything that could be possibly seen to the naked eye. It really took a new instrument to get beyond that. The telescope, that was where the breaking point was between the ancients and the moderns. Centuries of church dogma claiming Earth was the center of the universe was now plainly wrong. With the Catholic Church still reeling from the schism of the Protestant Reformation, Galileo's discovery appeared to undermine scripture. Dangerous for a church that felt under siege. Dangerous for a scientist proposing it. Nevertheless, Galileo, a devout Catholic, published his observations in a book called The Starry Messenger in 1610. Surprisingly, the church welcomed Galileo's findings at first. Had Galileo been a little more careful in his approach, he might have gotten away with it. One famous quotation from Cardinal Baronius, uh, a predecessor, was, the Bible tells us how to go to heaven, not how the heavens go. Ultimately, Galileo's downfall was not his inability to sway the church to his way of thinking, but rather his attempt at interpreting scripture all by himself, independent of the church. Galileo quotes the famous uh, Saint Augustine, who said that if you found an interpretation of scripture which seemed to 
be contradicted by well-established knowledge, then you should reconsider that interpretation of Scripture. But the Church, concerned with perceived threats to its own power, could not concede biblical interpretation to Galileo. In 1633, after Galileo published a new book championing the sun-centered system, the Pope summoned him to stand trial for heresy. He's forced to give up all his Copernican ideas, which apparently he did nearly in front of the tribunal. Despite his concession, Galileo quietly held fast to his beliefs throughout his final years under house arrest at his villa outside Florence. Galileo is the first modern scientist in the sense that he actively engaged in observations with the telescope, he actively proposed theories consistent with the telescope, and he dared, he dared to challenge the orthodoxy of the moment. Shortly before his death in 1642, Galileo inadvertently stumbled over a clue to Kepler's puzzle about the sun's strange influence on planetary motion. It was a clue that would help point future generations toward a theory of the Big Bang. Galileo's last published work dealt with the properties of falling bodies, which he noted always accelerated at the same rate, no matter what their mass. But it would take another genius to connect these two puzzle pieces together in a theory of gravity. Isaac Newton, born in 1643, explained the mechanism by which the planets moved. And not just how planets moved, but how everything moved, from planets, to apples.